I met Robin back, I believe, in about 2015, Robin and Vivian. Um, uh, this was during Global Visual Art does these open studio weekends every year. And so about 2015, I visited Robin in her studio, first time we had met. I believe that was right after you graduated yes. from UofL. <clears throat> and um, at the time, Robin was doing these beautiful little intimate portraits of people. Um, they were, and I and absolutely loved them and what she was doing with them. And so I included them in, at the time I was a curator at the Carnegie Center for Art and History in New Albany. So I included her in a sh that work in a show uh, called Hashtag Black Art Matters. And it, it was incredible. It was this nice grid of all these portraits. Um, and then she also did audio recording interviews with the people that we had on a tablet so that you could listen to the person telling their stories in their own voice while you're looking at their portrait of them. So <clears throat> it was beautiful, intimate, and they're all people that were in part of her community. Uh, family, friends, people that go to her church or in her neighborhood and all that, right? Yep, school. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, fast forward um, a little bit. Recently, I was um, reading about your time at Armory Arts Center as an artist in residence in, in Florida. And you had mentioned that being in that place uh, that was once your home and reflecting on your father's absence, he had passed away yeah. not long before that, had a was a significant part of your journey and all of that found its way into your work. So thinking back on those intimate portraits of the folks that you are so connected with from, from around you, and, you know, both physically and personally, and, and then your comment about that more recently, <clears throat> it's clear that the people and places around you hold a significant, hold a lot of significance with you and connect with your artwork. Uh, I, my first question, I was wondering if you could maybe share how some of those connections have influenced your work in this exhibition, how your personal connections may have manifested in this latest series. Well, I think in, even just like looking around the room, right, like every person in here has in some way, shape or form supported my journey, whether they looked at my work, encouraged me, bought artwork, um, if it has nothing to do with my work, just being a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And my work is super personal. So I do think a lot about, you know, what I've been through, what I've gone through, um, the hard things, the happy things. And every person in this room has contributed in some way to a part of who I am, mm -hmm. right? Kind of baked in. Yeah. And whether it's been a conversation or... Uh, just a passing, you know, you're doing great, you know, keep going. <laughs> that gets like, you don't understand when I hear those, how much I need to hear those in the moments that you send them to me. Because I guarantee you two seconds before that, I was thinking, what's the point? And the fact that I have people who support in the ways that they support, is so like important to me and so not only that I feel like to the work although it's personal it's like connections are what's I've realized that even now like coming back to Louisville connections are what's most important the work is important but it's also secondary to relationship mm -hmm. and to understanding where people fall in your life and you know, really taking the time to nurture that. And I'm trying to actually, you know, be more aware of that. Even if you're there in your life for like a season, it's still something It's like, there's a reason why they're there. Mm -hmm. And so cherish that while you can, because they're not always going to be there. So, and I, I don't mean that like, you know, it's just, I mean, like literally, <laughs> no, that life and death happens, but that doesn't mean that they're not with you. Mm -hmm. So make sure to foster that and let it grow. So I hope that 
that's really, I feel like, a part of that connection mm -hmm. between the works that I did before and the works that are happening now. Uh, so I guess I just want to kind of continue walking down your timeline, so to speak. So you graduated from UofL in 2014. You and I met 2015. Uh, then you moved to New York to attend the Art Academy for grad school in yes. 2016. Is that yes. right? Okay. And I think I read that it was around 2016 when you started boxing. Yes. Is that correct? <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more how you got into boxing? So I've been wanting to box for a long time, right? And so my friend Kendall over here, he like found, <laughs> he just walked in all late, and he like <laughs> found this, um, this studio, this uh, boxing gym, right? And he's like, yeah, they have these Tuesday, you know, you can go for free. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And I guess I didn't do, I didn't sign up, you know, in enough time, because he's like, oh, you ain't gonna do it. I was like, excuse you, you're not going to tell me what I am and not going to do. So I ended up signing up, of course, and I went. Like, we ended up going together, but then I ended up going by myself. And then next thing I know, I'm going two times uh, in the same day, in the same week. And next thing I know, I'm just, like, loving it. And the only reason why I stopped was because of circumstance. Um, COVID and then being in New York, like... Ooh, I went to one of them gyms and they was asking $300 a month. I was like, this is not rent. <laughs> what are you talking about? So I did end up finding a gym where it was, you know, priced for a student. But after a while, when that, you know, that money runs out, you have to start making some sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And sadly, boxing was one of the things on the chopping block. However, I started getting back into it after I moved here. And then I started making work for the show, so I got to get back back into it. But um, I, I loved it. I really felt like I met myself in the gym. Mm -hmm. Like I met a new version, not a, not a new version, but a different version. Somebody who I didn't connect with before that. Somebody who was confident. Somebody who was herself. But also, I wasn't afraid to look silly because I was learning something new that I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. And so once I started putting the boxing in the work, I stopped being so self-conscious about the work. Mm -hmm. I started just making the work. And Yeah, I was going to ask you about that next. Follow, follow that up. So the first images you work to incorporate boxing figures mm -hmm. that I've found at least show up around 2017, yeah. about a year later-ish. Um, and kind of been present ever since, yeah. clearly. <clears throat> So that was what made you decide to start down that path of creating images of boxers and female boxers in particular and and following up on that in your experience you've come across many other women boxing too so I come across women boxers all the time but boxing and painting not so much uh, Amy Cheryl uh, I had the opportunity, and I'm just like, thank God for that opportunity, because it was amazing. Um, but she came to the Academy Shore for me one day, and it was sometime after she did the Obama portrait, and um, we were able to have a studio visit. And she was just sharing with me the fact that she had gotten into boxing. And it, was, it wasn't really her, like, she fought, and then she was like, okay, I'm done with this. But she was able to connect with me on that mm -hmm. level, and I thought that that was just beautiful and amazing. But the reason why I really started putting boxing into the work, <sighs> grad school was hard. I was surrounded by all of these people who were making amazing work, and I was just like, it took me forever to get stuff done. I felt like I painted too slow. I was, I was just, I felt like I was drowning. And I felt like everybody else had the secret, and they knew what they was doing, and I just did not. And so I was really tight, technical, and the work was, it, it was what it was. Um, part of it was probably good, probably actually better than I thought that it was. But after a while, it really became like, I, I can't keep thinking this way. And so when I started boxing is when I started drawing and gesture. I loved gesture drawing mm -hmm. when we would draw in class and mm -hmm. I have, you know, you just had those 10, 15 minute or 
second poses and you're just trying to get the figure as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, this is it. This is what I love doing. And then it's like, I just started getting bigger and bigger with it. And then it's like, well, why don't I, you know, incorporate the boxing? Because when I feel my most at my, my most self, like mm -hmm. who I am is when I'm boxing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, let's just put this in there. Let's see what happens. And so that's what I did. And then I started drawing and erasing and then putting it back. I erased because I didn't want to get too attached to something. Because when I got too attached, I got too, like, tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy and tight. And I lost the gesture. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> went through that phase. And now it's, like, kind of in me now. It's, like, the stroke is there. The mm -hmm. line is there. So even if I don't like it, or even if I love it, it's still up for debate. Like, will it get erased? It might. Will it stay? It might. But just the whole, it might. Mm -hmm. I like that because it keeps me open and it keeps me, it keeps the flow going. Yeah. Some of my best drawings came when I was like in those boxing stances, you know, throwing punches in the studio and then drawing something right after. And it's like, does this work? I don't know. Let's keep going and see what happens. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, you have a whole scene of boxers. It's just like making sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I guess I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so you graduate with your master's degree in 2018. Then you head down to Florida the following year for the residency at the Armory. Yes. Right? Uh, while you're there, COVID-19 broke out, which essentially cut you off from your own residency, mm -hmm. right? Um, so in Florida, you're reflecting on all these experiences in this downtime where you weren't able to work in the studio, both internally and all these external issues that are happening in the world at large. Um, and you're thinking about how these experiences impact you, how they impact others, and how you could grow your practice to affect a larger audience, right? Yeah. I was wondering if you could, if we could hear more about your personal work was impacted by the thoughts and feelings and events going on in the world. And what do you think changed in your artwork that embodied this need to create a space for yourself more directly? I think, well, I feel like I've had to create space for myself for a long time. Um, Honestly, at the Academy is where I really started to understand that. And I was able to, because we, okay, so also at the, actually, I'll have to backtrack it just a little bit. Undergrad, going to UofL, um, we had a community of, you know, black students where we really surrounded ourselves with. And so we didn't, we didn't go to HBCU, obviously, but we were able to create sort of that feel for ourselves in that environment. And so I was used to having other people around me who also were creating space for themselves. We were creating space for one another. We were seeing one another. We were doing these things for one another. and. Right. Going to the academy, it was kind of like the rug was pulled out from under me for a second because it's like, well, dang, it's just me in this class. However, I did have people in you know, the class before me and the class after me. We were doing the same things for one another. We were seeing one another. We were making space for one another. But it wasn't as it wasn't the same because I didn't have people in my class doing that with me. Mm -hmm. So I had to still carve out something for myself. And so this body of work stems from that. And so I don't think it ever didn't. I, I don't think there was a necessarily a shift. I think there was just more. It was put to the forefront and a, a greater awareness. Mm -hmm. And I think if there was a shift that would have occurred, it was more of I uh, curated a show mm -hmm. in New York. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about that next. That's really what that came from. That would be, to me, the shift, the mm -hmm. catalyst. Because that show in and of itself, it's like, where are we? You know, who? 
where, where are we? Where are our BIPOC people, you know, Black, Indigenous, people of color? Like, where, where are we in the um, history of the academy? And because I didn't see a lot of us, you know, I didn't see, you have a lot of international students, but you don't have a lot of people who identify as BIPOC. You know, mm -hmm. and so having been in that, I won't say a lot, but in my class and in in, in my you know sphere, mm -hmm. and being able to see the generations that came before me, being able to support the generations that came after me, and it's just like you know we we were able for that moment to create a family. It was almost like going to a reunion, going to that show. Putting up the work was like mind blowing. It's like I have this prominent um, curator who's working with me, Larry Osheimensa, and who believes in the work as much as I believe in the work. And I'm learning from this person, and I have this opportunity. And it's really about connection, it's really about putting us to the forefront, it's really about making sure that the academy doesn't lose sight of everybody who it easily loses sight of like every day mm -hmm. there are people who get you know who aren't seen mm -hmm. whose work doesn't get seen by like the gallerists and people and they leave there thinking that nobody cares about them and it's not true and they're mm -hmm. making phenomenal work that nobody sees because they're not you know part of the aesthetic to me, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It's like, how are we going to actually put, how are we going to actually listen to the voices that need to be listened to if we don't listen to them, if we don't put them out there? And so seeing all the work together, it was just like, wow. Like, all of that came from me on my aunt's couch, depressed, sad, crying, thinking about George Floyd, thinking about Breonna Taylor, not being able to be here, but still feeling all of those feelings that people were here, here feeling. Mm -hmm. They were marching, I wasn't. But at the same time, I was still feeling that. Mm -hmm. So that was my contribution. And I was so glad to be able to do that. But I know I kept talking. <laughs> I was like, I could go on about it. Yeah, this. well, you know, <laughs> you, you, you've, you've covered a lot of what my follow-up question is gonna be <laughs> about this exhibition. So, so I'll just fill in a little bit here. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I was, going to, I was going to point out the seeds were sown while you were in Florida yeah, for this absolutely. exhibition. And in 2021, you returned to the New York Academy mm -hmm. to co-curate Parallels and Peripheries with Larry. Oh, Simon. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> this was your first curatorial project. Yes. <laughs> your first curatorial project that was written about in the New York Times. <laughs> I couldn't okay. believe it. I was like, they spelled my name right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it all started with you asking the question, how do we as people of color take ownership of our space? Yes. Um, you've already covered a lot. I was going to ask you about the journey of the exhibition and, and whatever. But I w was interested in knowing what it was like returning to that place that in many ways contributed to those issues that you were confronting, putting this show on at the Academy when some of the, you know, leading up to that, some of those feelings that you were having yeah. kind of, you know, was it, did, did you have any kind of, were you any kind of fear of, of like? I ain't gonna lie, I'm always gonna have mixed feelings about the academy, always. I just am. It, it's the institution as a whole from the ground up, you know, I, <clears throat> there, there are things, there are things. Um, I was not, scared however because to be honest that was the best time to have a show like that mm -hmm. and my i'm actually i ain't gonna lie i'm a little disappointed that the momentum felt like it dropped off mm -hmm. but i'm glad for what it was and to even have been given the opportunity um because it's not like you can just go out and propose stuff to the academy like they it's not like that, mm -hmm. but I went with my gut and I asked people and I asked, you know, the people I knew, people I didn't even know helped me with the proposal. And so 
honestly, I just believe by the grace of God that that even happened. But I'm always going to have mixed feelings about that place because of the fact that it's an institution mm. that does not understand equity in the way equity should really be understood. Mm -hmm. And it's not the only one. It's not like mm -hmm. it's it's an anomaly. It's not an it's it's America. Mm -hmm. That is the way it is here. And so, while I'm very proud of the show, so proud of what happened, I had support from all kinds of levels. I had people have my back. All of that. It still isn't enough. Mm -hmm. And until you really get to the root of it until you really understand the core of it, it's not going to get any better. You can't just dress it up on the outside and expect it to get better. You really have to get on the tip top because the trickle down doesn't work. And mm -hmm. People at the top don't understand and don't value what's really going on at the bottom. And I could say more. But I'm not going to, because <laughs> I, I'm still, I'm still trying to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the bigger and older the institutions are, the harder it, sh yeah. it is to change direction of those ships. The thing know? is, like, I got friends here who understand, but you got to though, because mm -hmm. otherwise the ship's gonna go down. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want your ship to sink. You need to start really understanding how to fix all of that right now, mm -hmm. because otherwise. You ain't gonna last. Like life, life is changing. Things are moving. People aren't gonna take everything anymore. So it's like, I tried to tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> Just saying. Okay, so um, I really feel like your journey is just getting started here. Either that, or I'm just getting old quickly, <laughs> and time is flying by much faster. I mean, time than, is flying. It's I feel scary. like it is. So, but regardless, you know, everyone here today is here because they have a vested interest in you and in watching you grow and succeed. Everyone here. And so my last question is, have you had any thoughts about what direction your next chapter is going to lead you? First of all, let me say this. Um, where I am right now, I couldn't be more thankful. Like, every person in this room, I am so thankful for all of y'all. You don't understand. Like, I could, like, sit here and ramble off what every person in this room has done for me. And the circumstances under which we met, like, that open studio weekend, two people came to my studio. <laughs> two. And you were the only person. The only other person besides my mama and the other person was looking at what I had knitted like because I had some gloves or something I had knitted. <laughs> you were the person who was like interested in the artwork so I just want to put that out there. <laughs> but as far as going forward I have so many ideas. I have so many things that I want to do. I just want a space at this point mm -hmm. so that I can like make it happen. I want to do, like I started doing vessels. I want to do more vessels. I've been wanting to do glass for the longest. This is actually like the best place for me to be, to do glass, honestly, because there's like several glass studios. Mm -hmm. And then I've been wanting to do animation, get into the digital field with that and like really see Your how- Your work lend itself really well to that. I and I just want to see how big I can get this. Because, like, even now I'm like, this is big. And I'm like, but it could be bigger. <laughs> Keep so, on like, the gallery walls are only so far. I know. That's the thing. So, actually, this is perfect. But um, I just, I just want to keep making. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep connecting. I want other people to be able to connect with the work. I want to make work that speaks to people. I want people to heal. I want to heal. I want all of those things for myself and for the people around me. And so the more that I think about where I'm going, it's like, I don't really know what the work's going to look like. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I know the materials I want to start looking into. And I know, you know, I just want to get bigger. I want to grow. And 
I want to help as many people as I can along the way because so many people have helped me. Like, I, I have quit. Well, not quit, but I have told myself, I'm done with this. Like, what's the point? I, I ain't got the money. I ain't got the time. I ain't got this. I ain't got that. So many times. Like, even during the show, I was about, nah, this is it. This is it. Let me just get this work done. And no, that's it. But that's, that's obviously not going to happen. There's still something in me that's just like, well, you kind of got to keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you Sorry. do. You do. You know? It's going to be yeah. exciting to watch. <laughs> really. It is. You know, and you do so much painting, drawing, ceramics. Poetry, curation, knitting, you know, I, you know, I, I can't wait. I hope to see a lot of these things integrate with each other. Even sure, more. at some point they're going to have to converge. Like, I don't have the time to, you know, do everything at one, like, one at a time. So yeah. they have to, like, start yeah. Yeah. <laughs> coming together. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Because, uh, uh, does anyone have any questions? All the music they record from now on.